good morning welcome to another session of e403 distributed uh, generation and smart grids in the last session we had seen uh, different load shaping techniques and today we will see dynamic energy management abbreviated dem before we proceed further let us see a quote by rabindranath tagore the highest education is that which does not merely give us information but makes our life in harmony with all existence we are in module 5 and today we will see various uh, techniques of dynamic energy management what is dem dem is an innovative approach to managing load at the demand side it incorporates the conventional energy use management principles which has been represented in dsm dr and der programs and merges merges them in an integrated framework that addresses permanent energy savings permanent demand reductions and temporary load peak reductions now let us see what are the integral components of dem the first one is the smart energy efficient end use devices all appliances lighting space conditioning and industrial process equipment with the highest energy efficiencies thermal energy storage systems that allow for load shaping then intelligent end use devices which allow two way communication and control high efficiency ip addressable appliances that can be controlled by utility end user or other authorized authorities secondly smart distributed energy resources here various distributed energy resources <coughs> need to be smart like generation devices like pv diesel engines micro turbines fuel cells that provide power along along with the grid then on site electric energy storage devices such as batteries and flywheels De devices that are dynamically controlled to supply base load peak shaving temporary demand reductions or power quality devices that are dynamically controlled to sell excess power back to the grid thirdly advanced whole building control system the entire building system the entire building or the home should be should have smart controls so these controls involve systems that optimize the performance of end use devices and ders based on operational requirements user preferences and external signal from utility or end users this controls should ensure that these devices only operate as needed for example automatic dimming of lights when daylighting conditions allow or reducing outdoor ventilation during periods of low occupancy these controls should allow two way communication for example they can sense data such as for example the carbon dioxide concentration in a particular room 
which might be dangerous for people living there to an external source and they can accept comments from an external source then there should be local individual controls that are mutually compatible with the whole building control system for example security lighting space conditioning appliances drs etc can all be controlled by a central unit also these systems should have the ability to learn from past experience and apply that knowledge to future events and finally the integrated communications architecture this should allow automated control of end user devices and ders in response to various signals maybe uh, such as pricing or emergency demand reduction signals from the utility day ahead weather forecast or any other external alerts for example a signal could be sent to shut down the outdoor outdoor ventilation systems in a building in the event of a chemical attack in the area and end user signals for example a facility manager could shut down the building system from an off site location during an unscheduled building closure it also should allow the end user devices ders to send operational data to external parties these communication systems that have an open architecture to enable interoperability and communications among devices so these four are the integral components of dynamic energy management and you can see them listed as building blocks of dea and here a picture is shown about the dem infrastructure applied to a generic building so you can see all the four components over here the key features of a dem are end user flexibility simplicity of operation and standard it platforms open systems architecture and universal gateways integration with existing building energy management system open standards and interoperability flat architecture for robust low cost systems it should contain only minimum number of layers of control network protocols between the front end hmi and final control and monitoring elements here the boundaries of dsm are shown which can be categorized into dsm categories dsm implementers and dsm policies the benefits of dsm can be for the customer for the utility for the environment or for the total energy system for the customer it could be savings in electricity bills he should have greater control over the energy consumption he should be able to actively participate in the market then education information and he should be in touch with the latest technologies and for the utilities they should have corporate social responsibility deferred investment in new generation capacity by way of optimizing the energy usage and improved quality of service service and on the environmental front reduced carbon dioxide footprints 
and also improved local area, local air quality. And for the total energy system, security, reliability, efficiency, sustainability, dealing with various DERs, improved operation efficiency, market transformations and disciplining the wholesale market power. There are various challenges too, challenges from the customer side, utility side, environmental and the total energy system. The role of DSM in smart grid is listed here. So various industrial and commercial on-site on -site storage, demand response, efficiency, on-site generation, all these should be tackled using the smart grid. It should also, it can be also residential micro storage, micro generation, residential demand response or residential energy efficiency. So DSM has a great role in the implementation of smart grid because it ultimately aims at optimizing the energy usage. The main categories of DSM can be divided into market regulatory, fiscal, information and voluntary. And with that we wind up this session. We will see you again with another session soon. Thank you very much. This is Dr. Unikrishnan PC signing off. You can see a beautiful picture of the Red Fort at Old Delhi built by Shah Jahan in 1638. These are the references. If you feel free to contact me. And thank you very much.